Good morning, elect. I'm here to give a study this morning on the two lions and the tribe of Judah. He is an old lion, scars on his face, teeth missing between his canines. His body is scarred. He lays in the grass in the heat of the day, roaring. And then there's the young lion resting in the shade with his smooth, scarless face and wind-blown mane. He is content as he surveys the territory of his soon-to-be kingdom, and he as their king. When a male lion begins to reach sexual maturity, the older lion within the pride will kick them out. They will make it or they'll die. The young lions will roam the countryside solo or in small bands, eyeing out new territories. If they stray into a territory of an old lion pride, they will be attacked or killed. Uh, the majority of male lions die during this time. If they survive long enough to find a promising new area, the next step is to take over an, um, another pride. They will fight often to death for this pride. They, um, when they take over the pride, they will always kill the pride's cubs, ensuring that the other lion genes will not be passed on. Um, female lions will not be receptive while they are nursing, so killing the cubs enables the male lions to procreate. Only physically strong, intelligent, and fit males survive to become adults in charge of a pride. The killing of an adult male in a pride can throw the group into a chaos that makes the pride more vulnerable uh, to their predators. And she, Leah, bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left barren. Rachel was to remain barren until her appointed time. Uh, Judah meaning celebrated, praise, let him be praised. Uh, in he Hebrew letter associated with Judah, the pict pictograph is breath and praise. It is the fifth letter of the alphabet. The numeric value is five, meaning grace. Judah's name also includes the four letters of God's name, Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, I am that I am. There are the two natures of Judah, Judah being the tribe that is to hold the scepter, uh, which is an ornamental staff carried by a ruler, a symbol of sovereignty. Uh, Judah was the protecting tribe in the camp. They went first into battle. And on the east side, towards the rising of the sun, shall the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah. Uh, spiritual Judah will come forth first in the spirit, this being God's elect. And we're going to go to uh, Genesis 37, starting with verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. Um, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zelpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil um, report. Um, 17 means overcoming the enemy, complete victory. Bila meaning timid, and Zilpah meaning trickle, as in myrrh. Joseph, representing of the two witnesses um, that will come forth um, first, uh, they will deliver God's elect from out of the perverse spirit of Egypt. Um, they come forth um, first in the spirit, having spiritual eyes to, um, and ears to discern. Uh, three, now Joseph loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. In verse one, it says Jacob, uh, Jacob being the heel grabber, grabbing onto another man's heel, the supplanter, but now he is Israel. He will rule as God. He loved Joseph more than all of his children. Now there was leaning on Jesus's bosom, one of his disciples whom uh, Jesus loved, um, he made him a coat of many colors, this being the priestly garment, uh, the wedding garment. He is the first to come uh, forth uh, to the marriage. Uh, four, and when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Um, 
the two witnesses will be elevated over their brethren because they recognize I am and they lead the elect to Mount Moriah where they are to ascend um, the spiritual staircase to meet I am um, at the top. Five, and Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it to his brethren and they hated him yet the more. This being the angel, the messenger, one in spirit that gives a message. This message is, um, will not be written down. It will be in the hand of the angel. This message will come forth in the last two and a half months. That is when the spiritual man will come forth at the seventh dimension of time. You will not um, be given this um, message by an angel unless you are in the spirit and um we will read of that in um chapter 10 revelation verses 8 through 11 and the voice which i heard from heaven spoken to me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth um it is not written down it's in the hand of an angel and I went unto the angel, and I said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter, because it will bring forth judgments. And he said unto me, the, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Uh, they will not accept the vessel that I am chooses to speak from. And he said unto him, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. Um, for behold, um, they will uh, God's elect will receive dreams and visions to relay to the elect, but they will not um, be accepted. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood around about it, and made obedience to my sheep. And his brethren said unto him, Shall thy indeed reign over us? Or shall thy indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. When the two witnesses present themselves to the elect, their brethren, they will not um, be accepted. Uh, and he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I've dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience uh, to me. He says eleven stars in Revelation 12, verses 1 and uh, through 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Upon her head... Um, is a crown, a crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarchy as a symbol of authority. On the east side towards the rising of the sun shall the standard of the camp of Judah. Judah is the tribe holding the scepter, the rulership. This woman representing of the vessel that will hold the scepter and wear the crown over the brethren, uh, the eleven stars, the tribes. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Uh, 10, and he, and he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father uh, rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thy hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee on the earth? Um, he told it to his father, um, this being his fleshly father, uh, Jacob. And his brethren envied him, but his father, which is the spiritual father, observed the saying. Um, this is our heavenly father, Israel, um, observed the same. Uh, and his brethren went to feed their father's flocks in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. Uh, this is Israel speaking to Joseph. He has been he is being sent out as an apostle, and he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. Uh, brethren, being the elect and the flocks, one hundred and forty-four thousand, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. Um, 
bring me word again, as in verse 2. Hebron meaning seat of association. Hebron is where David settled and made it his capital. Uh, Shechem meaning shoulder, place of commitment, of promise. This is where Abram received God's promise of the land. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in um, Dothan. Dothan meaning two wells. And when they saw him afar off before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us uh, not um, kill him. Reuben being the firstborn of the flesh, um, Reuben, thy art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. God's elect will come forth from the flesh, taking on the spirit, um, being I am, not my. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. God is protecting him through Reuben. And to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished, for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, the coat of many color, colors that was on him. They stripped him of his priestly robe and they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Um, as for thee also by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is not water. Uh, Dothan meaning two wells. There's Jesus, the living water that you'll never thirst again, and the well of Jacob, uh, of man, heel grabber, that you will thirst. And this well was dry because it is dry of the living waters. And they... Um, and they sat down to eat, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. Behold, a company of Ishmaelites come from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Gilead is where the healing balm was to be found. This is where the physicians would go to receive of this healing balm. They are carrying it down into Egypt, being the perverse spirit. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Judah is telling his brother, and what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? And then we have Judas, meaning Judah. He betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Jesus was sold as a price of a slave, sold out as a price of a slave, and they sold Joseph to be a slave. And then we're going to go to chapter 38, verse 1. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and returned in, into a certain uh, at, uh, Dolomite uh, whose name was Hira. Uh, at that time, Judah went down from his brethren. We are not to go down. We are to ascend, not descend. Uh, Adela, um, Joseph defeat, uh, Joshua defeated in Joshua chapter 15, verse 35, and Hira meaning a noble family. Judah is supposed to protect the throne, hold the scepter of rulership for the 12 tribes. He is not to go down. He is to ascend, standing for the king of kings and the lord of lords of his noble family, his noble vine. Uh, two, and Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and he went unto her. Canaanites were wicked, idolatrous people, meaning the people of the lowlands. 
Shua meanings Dell, a small valley, usually among trees. He became one with this wicked daughter of the Canaanites, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name uh, R, R meaning watchful. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name uh, Onan, um, meaning strong. And again she conceived and she bare a son and called his name Sheila, meaning shortened. And he was at um, Chizab when she bare him, Chizab meaning falsified. And Judah took a wife for Ar, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. Tamar meaning date palm, an ancient symbol of the tree of life and also an emblem of triumph and victory. Also the symbol of a righteous man. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Not as Judah who allowed his flesh to rule over him. This be that woman that will triumph. Uh, get the victory over Judah the man of the flesh. 7. And our Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said uh, unto Onan, Go unto thy brother's wife, and marry him, and raise up a seed to uh, thy brother. Uh, through the seed of Tamar will come Christ. It will not come through this evil seed, through a Canaanite woman, but through the bloodline of the chosen seed. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his, and it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest he should give seed to his brother. Uh, not be his seed. He refuses the seed of Christ. He spills it out on the ground, just as Cain spilled Abel's blood on the ground, uh, trying to prevent the seed line of Christ. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Uh, the Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. And in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up into his sheep shearers to Timnath, and his friend uh, Hira the Adomite, um, um, he went up, and it, and it was told to Mar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garment off from her and covered her with a veil and wrapped herself and sat in an open place, which is, by the way, uh, to Timnath. And for she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given unto him uh, to wife. Um, she wrapped herself. She is covered in righteousness. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Uh, Joseph's dream uh, was in Genesis 37, verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have uh, dreamed a dream, a more, and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. This woman will come out of Judah, being the twelfth star that is clothed with the sun, Judah camped on the east side towards the rising um, of the sun. Uh, Judah uh, will come, uh, the tribe of Judah will come forth first um, in the spirit. Timnath meaning a portion assigned, Sheila meaning shortened request. 15. And when Judah saw her, he thought her to be a harlot because she had covered her face. He was looking for a harlot, not a righteous woman, because he is thinking in the flesh, the lust of the flesh. Um, and he turned unto her by the way and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come into thee. For he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law. And she said, What will thy give me that thy mayest come unto me? And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock. And she said, Will thy give me a pledge till thy send it? A pledge is, pledge is in the sense of an exchange given as a security, a solemn promise of a thing that is given for the fulfillment of a contract, a payment, or debt. 
Timnath meaning portion a sign, an extra portion named for the city of Ephraim, the covenant nation meaning double fruit. It was a sign um, for Joshua. According to the word of the Lord, they gave him the city which he called Timnath and Mount Ephraim, and he built the city and he dwelt there. Joshua, representing of our high priest Melchizedek, and he showed me Joshua, meaning Yahweh saved, Jewish leader, also Yeshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave um, the, to graven thereof, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Then take the silver and the gold and make a crown and set them upon the head of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Uh, 18 and he said what pledge shall i give thee and she said thy signet and thy bracelets and thy staff that is in thy hand and he gave it to her and came in to her and she conceived by him that is in thy hand as in power as in having the rulership the scepter and he gave it to her and now she has the power the signet and the bracelets and the staff he sold out his kingship for his fleshly desires to the woman tamar the righteous woman not a harlot uh, just as he did to Joseph, he sold out J Joseph, his righteous brother, to the Ishmaelites. And then Judas, a name for Judah, sold out Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. He became one with this righteous woman, bringing forth the seed that will bring forth uh, Christ. And um, she arose and went away and laid by her veil from her. And put on the garments of her widowhood. And Judah sent the kid by the hand of his friend the Adomite to receive his pledge from the woman's hand. But he found her not. His friend the Adomite from verse 1 from the woman's hand. Now the pledge is in the woman's hand as in spiritual power. And then he asked the men of that place saying where is the harlot that was openly by the wayside. And they said there was no harlot uh, in this place. There was no harlot. Tamar was a righteous woman. She was fulfilling the will of God that Judah was not. He was thinking in the flesh not in the spirit. And he turned returned to Judah and said I cannot find her. And also the men of that place said there was no no harlot in this place and judah said let her take it to her lest we be shamed behold i send this kid and thou has not found her and it came to pass after three months after that it was told judah saying tomorrow thy daughter-in-law have played the harlot and also behold she is with a child by whoredom and judah said bring her forth and let her um, be burnt she didn't play the harlot he did and when she was brought forth, she went unto her father-in-law, saying, By the man whose these are am I with child. And she said, Discern, I pray thee, whose are these, the signet and the bracelets and the staff? By the man whose these are am I with child. And she said, Discern, think spiritually, whose are these, the signet and the bracelets and the staff? They are gods, they're not man's. He had no right to turn them over to what he thought was a harlot woman. God has the right to give them to whom he chooses, and he chooses a righteous woman. And in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and calmly for them that are escaped of Israel. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush, in one day. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Thy people also shall all righteous, they shall um, be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified, not man, as in Reuben, the firstborn of the flesh, but of spirit. Reuben, thy art my firstborn, my might. And the beginning of my strength, the excellency and dignity and the excellency of power. Uh, this will be um, God's might and glory. 
and um, Obed um, begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this and in mercy shall the throne be established and he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. I, Jesus, have sent my angel as a spiritual messenger to testify unto these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Star as a spiritual messenger of the morning. And then we're going to go to Genesis 49, verses 8. Judah, thy aren't he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down uh, before thee. Judah meaning celebrated to praise. When Leah gave birth to judah she said this time i will praise the lord to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give unto them beauty of ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planning of the lord that he might be glorified tomorrow was the was the date palm a symbol of a righteous man thy hand as in spiritual power is in the hand of the righteous woman shall be in the neck and by thy sword shall thy live and thy shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thy shall have dominion that thy shall break his yoke from off thy neck thy father's children as in fleshly father jacob shall bow down before thee Judah holds the scepter, and the scepter was put in the hands of a righteous woman. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod as a baton of royalty. Joseph's dream in Genesis chapter 37 verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream and told his, bro his um, father and uh, brethren and, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made the obedience uh, to me. Um, nine and Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thy aren't gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an lo old lion, who shall rouse him up? Judah is a lion's whelp, a cub. The cubs of a lion are very vulnerable. When a male lion tries to take over a pride, they will kill the pride's cubs to prevent their seed line from coming forth. My son, thy aren't gone up. As to ascend Mount Moriah, he stooped as to bend the knee, brought low. He couched as to lie down. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord thy God. And as an old lion, the old lion, the one that is the rightful lion to the pride, who shall rouse as to arise him up. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until shall Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be a staff of royalty Shiloh meaning to one it belongs the rightful seed lawgiver in truth and righteousness and unto him shall the gathering of the people be this be in the gathering of the many membered body um, into one body bear, bone upon his bone um, bone as in strength of the body um, then eleven binding is full foul unto the vine and his ass is cold unto the choice vine he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes binding us to join in battle uh, a yoke his foal is in the sense of raisin as just 
broke into a load, and his ass is cold unto the choice vine. For of old time I have broken thy yoke, and burst thy bands. Thy saidest I would not transgress, when upon every high hill, and under every green tree, thy wanderest play in the harlot. Yet I planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then out thou turned into a ge degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? He washed his garments in wine. This is garments as in vesture. They shall perish, but thy sh they shall endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment as a vesture. Shall thy uh, change them, and they shall be changed. Thus say the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. And his clothes in the blood of grapes that which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thy shall not reap neither gather grapes of thy vine undressed for it is the year of rest unto the lord we are to be in rest with i am taking on the new wine the noble vine uh, 12 his eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk uh, this being the new wine of truth, having eyes to see, and his teeth with milk as in its richness. I am come unto my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, drink you abundantly, O beloved. This being um, the God's elect who are of the noble vine, not the vine of the degenerate as an immoral, corrupt person. They were taken over by the young lion, that they came in devouring the pride, destroying the cubs to prevent the rightful heirs, um, the resistors of the Holy Spirit. This young lion that wants the pride, wanting to take over the old lion's pride. Where is the dwelling? Uh, of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions where the lion even the old lion walk and the lions whelp and none made them afraid behold i'm against thee says the lord of hosts and i will burn her chariots in the smoke and the sword shall devour thy young lions and i will cut off thy prey from the earth and the voice of thy messenger shall no, sh shall no more be heard behold the people shall rise up as a great lion and lift up himself as a young lion he shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may be may devour. He wants the pride. Judah is to protect this pride, the lion of the tribe of Judah, and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And I'm going to go to Second Timothy sixteen through eight. Second Timothy four. Sixteen through eighteen. At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray, God, that it may not be laid to their charge, notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, this being the Babylonian system, he will deliver me out of the, fair, the Philistine, being, this being the uncircumcised. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord um, be with you. And we're going to go to Matthew 1.20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she brought forth a son, and thy shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Uh, she will bring forth a son, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus will be the Savior. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, um, saying, this was all done, 
um, behold, a virgin shall be with the child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Um, this is the spiritual virgin shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. I am. Then Revelation 12, 1 through 5. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with a child, cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. This will happen and I am will come forth in the last two and a half months. Satan will come to prevent this birth. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she is a place prepared of God. And they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Uh, this is the man child who's to rule all nations with a rod of iron this being i am that comes forth and uh, through this spiritual virgin and revelation 19 11 through 17 and i saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he does judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords and I saw an angel standing an uh, angel the messenger one in the spirit standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great uh, God an angel standing in the sun And we will end this for today, elect. You have a great day until the morning.